How's it going everybody? Gunner here. Uh, today I'm going to launch a four-part small video series dedicated to tying jigs. Uh, and, and basically the reason why is because at the core of everything, the only thing I care about is the fact that I made the lure. Like, if you want to go trolling, I'm on board as long as we're trolling my flies. If you want to go jigging, I'm on board as long as I'm jigging my flies. If we're going fly fishing, I'm on board, but they're going to be my flies. I love crafting my own lures. That's where it all started. And I was introduced as fly tying, uh, to flying tying as, as a, a means to do that, right? It gave me the opportunity to make whatever it was that I was using. And when I got into fly fishing, I sucked at it really bad <laughs> for a lot of years and I couldn't cast to save my life. And so instead of being disciplined and practicing, I would tie jigs and fish them on my spin gear. And so I, I basically want to do a four part series. We're going to go over four different patterns, a bait fish pattern, a crayfish pattern, a leech pattern, and a bugger. And the bugger is supposed to imitate like dragonfly nymphs, helgramites, large stoneflies, right? So it's not, you can make an argument that it looks like a leech, but we're taking a, a buggy approach to it. And between those four things, you're going to have basically every category covered for chasing smallmouth, pike, carp, lake trout, splake, brook trout, like you're going to have a fly for every situation so that if you're a spin fisherman and you have any interest at all in, in kind of making your own lures and not being held to these kind of limitations by the industry uh, and to just be able to craft what you want and imitate the forage that you have and the color combos that you want based on your fish and your water conditions and whatnot, hopefully this small series equips you to do that. And I'm going to try to use the simplest materials possible. We're going to use like bucktail, saddle hackle, some pheasant, uh, maybe a rabbit zonker. Like that's it. Like I'm not going to dress these things to the nine. I'm not going to use ten materials in a fly. We're basically going to, you need something that will hold the hook uh, and then you need some thread and then you should be able to find this stuff literally anywhere. If you have a tackle shop that has a very small fly department, like I'm talking like, like this big, there's a good chance they're going to have these materials. So we're going to dive in. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is a bait fish pattern. This is actually Bob Popovic's Semperfly. So check it out. And the only thing to keep in mind is that this summer, 2020, uh, I'm going to do uh, another short series, whether it's one video or three or four, I don't know, uh, but fishing this stuff on the river for smallmouth and whatever else we catch um, so that you guys are not only equipped to tie the flies, but you're equipped to fish them and understand kind of how what I have in mind when I'm tying these flies and what for. So let's dive in, check it out. So you're going to get all this kind of bulk and dimensionality out of this body and collar with all those hackles and they'll actually retain a lot of that shape just because they're nice stiff bristled hackles. You have this ultra limp tail supported by the bucktail tied in the round to maximize the movement so everything's not just paired and low profile. Uh, you pair that thing with a little bit of a jig action and you got a pretty killer bait fish pattern that you can throw on your spin rod. So first up, Bob Popovic's Semperfly. Uh, this thing is just nasty. We're going to tie it on a Kalen's 16th ounce darter head jig. Uh, I like this jig because it's a decent hook. The hardest thing with tying any jig is finding a stout hook. I hate weak hooks. Anyway, I'm going to come in with Danville's, this is, there's a six right there, zero, zero, six, six one thousandths of an inch monofilament thread. And I'm just going to start that sucker and bring her to the back. Now we're going to keep this as simple as possible. I'm going to stop about here. Put down a decent thread base. The first thing we're going to come in with is bucktail. And this is just junk bucktail. You don't need ultra premium bucktail. We're only going to try to tie maybe a, a four and a half inch bait fish pattern here. So short bucktail is going to be absolutely fine. Um, for this pattern, it doesn't really matter where you grab it from, but I'm going to come up there towards the third. Now I'm going to assume most of you guys don't have that much experience tying because this is geared toward either beginner fly tires or maybe spin fishermen transitioning or, or just spin fishermen tying for spin fishing or whatever it is. Uh, but when you take bucktail and you cut it off the hide, there's going to be some like fur. I was going to say hair. Obviously it's hair. There's some like insulative fur uh, that you don't need and it's really short. So you just pinch and pull it out. And then there's some shorter fibers that are just going to create bulk that I don't need. Oh, that's probably a little denser than I want. And that right there, I'm happy with. 
Now I'm going to tie this in and this is going to be the base and kind of give a little bit of bulk and support and width to all the hackles that I'm going to use to build the remainder of the fly. And you can see just coming off the tail naturally all the tips are slightly tapered which is absolutely perfect. But one of the goals throughout the whole series is having no straight edge, straight edges. Everything should be tapered. So I'm going to cut that bucktail vertically, come up with a nice loose thread wrap, hit my thread probably three times around that. I'm going to shove that around the hook here and I'm basically just taking a thumbnail and hitting the top of my thread and then I'm going to pinch it, pinch it, pinch it and just allow that pressure to move it around. Give that a nice straight hard pull which is going to lock it in place and then we're going to lock these butts down. <laughs> Alright so the truth is I just cut all that off with the razor blade and put that on a different bobbin to see if I still have that problem. <coughs> so. I'm going to redo this quickly. So right back to where we were, coming up with a loose turn. Hit that turn three times, thumbnail right on top of the thread to get it initially pushed around. Just pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, and then give that a nice straight hard turn. Then I'm going to lock down the rest of these butts here. And that bucktail is not going anywhere. If you run forward, run back, collapse that a little bit, <coughs> you're good. Now I'm going to come in, and this will relax when it gets wet, by the way. That's just a little bit of flare and static and whatnot. And I'm going to come in. This was, this cost me $10. This is not super expensive. I found this at a fly show. Uh, fly shows are one of the best places you can go to to get materials, because there's a lot of vendors, so there's a lot of stuff to pick through. Uh, but this is just a rooster saddle, and I'm going to look for some fairly short feathers here. I don't want some, you know... I don't want to take a 8 inch feather and cut it short and use it in my 4 inch fly. I want to use that for an 8 inch fly. So I'm going to take about 4 perfect little short saddles here. And I just ripped them off that neck. And uh, you can see I'm just trying to get my initial length. I want to measure that out so I like it. And I'm trying to, I selected a length so that I was back here into this furry stuff because you can see on the DSLR just how thick that stem is right there and that thick stem is actually a little bit flatter if you were to go up in here that stem gets very compressed and when you try to tie it in it'll flip and rotate on you but when you go back into that fat marabou section I can just come and hit that with a turn and I'm gonna basically <coughs> work feathers all the way around my hook here so that just has like a turn on it. I'm going to come up, put a turn on that. Throw another hackle on here, right flat on the bottom. I'm going to put two turns just so it's a little bit more snug. I'm going to come and hit that with a turn. Oh, that hackle's facing the wrong way. Sorry, they're all supposed to cup into the fly there. That one was coming at me, I wasn't really paying attention. And then I'm going to get one more here on the side kind of on the top side a little bit to the top and I'm gonna take that mono and just pull straight down again and then I'm gonna go up on top of those feathers a little bit and just kind of collapse them you get a really nice clean tying point and look at all that hackle man so nice now the Semperfly is one of the coolest things ever it's super fishy uh, what's really nice, you tie that tail in correctly, you have a little bit of a stiff stem back here because we move further back in the, the feather, you're not going to get a lot of fouling. And because of the way the body's built up, the body can't foul. So you have this really nice, uh, kind of decent sized profile jig, especially for four inch bait fish, <coughs> that's not going to foul. And it's going to allow you to just whip it out there repeatedly with your spin rod. I'm just going to come and take some Zappa Gap. Make sure that that thread is locked in place because it's going to get abused repeatedly from smallmouth. <laughs> and now, so when we did our tail, we took some fairly kind of thin style saddle. It's all nice, thin, kind of sparse. Now when I come up and start palmering this body, that's the technique that we're going to use, I want some nice, thick, webby looking stuff. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> show you on here. So you have these really ultra thin saddles you can even see them hanging down here in the camera ultra thin I'm gonna come up and choose this stuff you see how thick and webby that is 
all the stuff at the top way down technically this would be like the butt the butt of the rooster way down here but and I'm gonna select these guys and because I like to tie big musky deceivers and stuff I don't want to take the best ones because I'm gonna use those <laughs> for different applications but I want to kind of find some junk feathers that I can't use to tie my big deceivers and that's what I'm gonna populate this body with so give me a sec I'm gonna pull out maybe five or six here so all I'm gonna do is come in and take this feather cut it back here where it starts to get a little bit soft on me I'm gonna take a thread wrap over the top at an angle and now my threads behind the feather I'm gonna come back in front of it put down some locking turns and a little half hitch to lock it in place. Now you don't need hackle pliers. I can physically grab this and palmer it, but they're going to help you. And all this is is it's a just a really low profile means to grab the actual stem of that feather, so I don't have to worry about hanging on to it. And then I'm just going to lightly walk this around the hook. And what's nice about these thick webby ones, right? Because we use the thin low profile ones to build the tail. These thick webby ones. Uh, they actually hold quite a bit of volume in the water so this body is always going to be moving and, and undulating and flaring and it looks ultra lively uh, but they're going to retain quite a bit of their bulk and so you're not going to have to worry about this body just kind of collapsing into nothing now what I'm going to do is I, I wrap that hackle forward I'm going to take my thread and wrap over top of it so all of it's protected under my thread I don't have any exposed stem and I'm just going to walk forward and I'm going to do that again and I'm just going to fill up the hook shank jump up onto the lead and then fill up the lead something I do is I always take the tips and break them out I don't like the way the tips look keeping the water push up here at the front of the fly. I will mention this, all of these are tied in so that the, the feather, the way the feather's cupped is it's cupped towards the back. Something that they all, all have in common here. And this is a very easy fly right after you tied in that tail to put some uh, flashaboo or mylar in there, anything like that to help put a little bit of flash in there. But I'm just keeping this one simple. Now, so what I'm doing here to finish the fly, you can just take your hackle and just finish it the way you have been. <clears throat> but I had some pheasant lump, uh, <laughs> pheasant rump, uh, laying on my table here, and I'm going to use that as a collar. It's a little bit longer uh, and so also a little bit darker and it'll give the head some nice little contrast up here. So I didn't mean to divert from the plan there but I needed one more hackle to finish this and this one was already out. So I'm going to use this. And the tying technique and everything, the application, was the exact same as every other previous step. I'm just going to come in, whip finish. So you're going to get all this kind of bulk and dimensionality out of this body and collar with all those hackles and they'll actually retain a lot of that shape just because they're nice stiff bristled hackles. You have this ultra limp tail supported by the bucktail tied in the round to maximize the movement so everything's not just paired and low profile. Uh, you pair that thing with a little bit of a jig action and you got a pretty killer bait fish pattern that you can throw on your spin rod. Um, and what's really nice is none of this stuff up here because it's all short and it's tied in the round it can't fall around that hook point. So you're not going to be making casts and having bucktail every which way or a long piece of saddle every which way or a long piece of peacock every which way. Um, <clears throat> something you can do, you can always glue eyes right here 
Uh, you can put a little epoxy head on there. You can do a lot of cool things. Uh, you can change the feather colors as you move forward and do chartreuse. You could do a chartreuse head or uh, a white tail with a red head. You could do a fire tiger type thing. You could alternate a black feather with a yellow feather with a black feather and a yellow feather. You can do a lot of cool stuff. I kept it simple, used all natural, didn't even put any flash in it. Um, and I bet you about, I don't know how much money you'd want to put on it, but I'm going to get a small mouth or five or ten or twenty five or fifty to eat this thing. Thanks for watching. Check out the next one. We're going to do, ah, we'll do the bugger. We'll do the bugger. Check it out.